Okay, welcome to the world of Rod's Tabletop Hoops. Today we have one of those classic unboxings. I have unsealed the top and have popped a couple of the uh, filling materials outside of this box. But other than that, I really haven't looked at the cards. So let's just take a look at this. Uh, my Black Friday mentality was more like looking at different products and determining whether it was the right time to buy them. This particular product was on sale. I had a couple other options. I was looking at Hoops Tabletop Pro Basketball's 81-82 season of cards, which was $25. Unfortunately, the shipping was $17, and I said, oh, I'm going to wait on that one. They didn't have a sale going on, so I was just going to wait on that one. The other one was uh, Sideline Strategy Games and Joe Bryan's Payoff Pitch Baseball, which I do not own because that game just looks fascinating to me. But then I realized... I've got a whole bunch of baseball games that I don't play enough, so I'm just going to hold off for now. So anyway, let's take a look and see what this box entails. I took the first piece off, and uh, to be honest, I had this my camera on photo instead of video, so I unsealed it literally two minutes ago, but all I had was a photo of it, and I don't have any <laughs> pictures of it. I'll try to show you a picture of the sealed box just to, to authenticate this just slightly. But anyway... What happened was I popped this open. These two sheets were right here. And I popped this guy right out right here. And it is sideline strategy basketball, known as, also known as bank shot basketball, not sideline strategy basketball, by Joe Bryan. And these are the 1988-89 season cards. Um, I want to really know whether Joe popped in a card for every single player who played. This is my first NBA season. They did it with college, but that doesn't count because they have no trades in college basketball during the season. So this will be my first experience with a uh, NBA season. So this is very interesting to me. I got this on sale. It was kind of a post Black Friday, but it was such a new season. It still was, I think, $24 instead of the $29 regular price, and the shipping was somewhat reasonable. So I just felt like this was the time to pull the trigger on an NBA season since I'd already invested in the bank shot basketball game and, and have played a few of their NCAA set number one teams. And there will be more of that in the coming year. So anyway, this is 88-89. You can see there's Robert Parrish right here. There's Danny Ainge right there. Moses Malone of the Atlanta Hawks right there. I'm interested to see how well collated these are and if there are, there are any um, combined season cards perhaps. I'm not really sure how he operates when he does his bank shot basketball NBA season. So let me get this cut open. We'll take a look at it. All right, I got a couple stands here. We could have put a couple cards on display. I didn't completely destroy the cellophane here since I didn't do an authentic unboxing to begin with. We'll just start right there and let's take a look at some of these players. The Chief, Robert Parrish, Boston Celtics, 1989. Pretty cool. And I just got to start collating the heck out of these things. Craig Hodges, they are not collated, obviously. And there's Adrian Dantley with Dallas. Now, Dallas was Adrian's second team of the year. He uh, obviously started the year um, in Detroit, and then he kind of got into a little tussle with the rest of the team, and Isaiah Thomas and Bill Ambeer, they decided, you're, you're, not, you're not a fit here, and Chuck Daly sent him to the Mavericks in exchange for uh, Mark Aguirre, and of course that worked. They won the NBA championship. There's Larry Smith, the Golden State Warriors, Detlef Shrimp. Indiana Pacers, Super Cooper Loop, Michael Cooper, Dwayne Pearl, Washington. Got to start with the expansion, Miami Heat. Chris Morris, Mike Jaminski, Adrian Branch, Wayman Tisdale, Olden Polonese. Got some good players in here back from 1989. Brings back a lot of memories. Like I said, I do not have a lot of seasons from the uh, late 80s. Uh, I have a few, but I don't have much from the late, very late 80s and early 90s. And so this will definitely fit in uh, a season I want to play a couple of games with and see what it's all about. There's Joe Klein. 88-89. NBA. See, there's one of those combined cards. That's something I had not not seen. So I'm assuming Joe's going to have 
Probably a combined card with maybe Sacramento and Boston, perhaps. I'm not sure. There's another combined card, Jay Vincent. Vincent was with a couple of teams, and I'm at the look that up. I can't remember what teams he was uh, toward the end of his career there. Didn't play very well, but uh, there's definitely some combined teams. Anthony Frederick, 88-89, Indiana. At least he's on the Indiana. Andre Turner, Michael Jackson. I think Michael played at Georgetown with Patrick. And, of course, those team cards, you have the opportunity to play um, cards with a team um, and not indiv individual cards. So that's another way to, to do that. Let's see if I can bring this in just a little bit closer in case anyone wants to see any of this. So, anyhow, I got three bricks of these things, so there's plenty of cards to, to go through. And there's the Phoenix Suns. The Suns, they were typically, even at this time, a pretty high-powered offense. 118 points a game scored, 110.9 game per game allowed, 55 wins. That's a pretty darn good record. And, of course, you get just your generic card as well. John Battle, Jim Paxson, John Paxson's brother with Boston, and of course John Paxson's teammate, Michael Jordan. Let's see, block 62 to 70, steal 2 to 9 on his turnover column of 71 to 90, so he's definitely a stealing threat. That'll be maybe your best player in the league. That is quite a card. Brad Davis for Dallas. There's plenty of guys. And there's Mark Aguirre as a Detroit Piston. So that is, is that just Piston stats? 36 games. So 36 games, it's only Piston stats. This is the first season uh, with a minor exception of maybe PTG where you actually have a card issued for two different teams. I, I really have not been on the boat with that just because I haven't bought a lot of cards in the last... 15 years other than my usual tabletop basketball hobby. So Otis Smith of Golden State, Scotty Skiles. Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's some that are going to be, you know, we, we, we had a couple of combined team cards. So with, say, a guy like uh, Danny Ainge who got traded uh, to Sacramento, we should have a Danny Ainge Sacramento card, a Danny Ainge Detroit Pistons card, and a not Detroit Pistons, Boston Celtics card in addition to a combined card. So I don't know. Some people like to play that combined season to represent the entire season. Other people like to play the games as played. So you'll play a Danny Ainge Celtics card with the Celtics, a Danny Ainge Kings card if you play them with the Kings. So, And uh, I've cr actually created some envelopes uh, that actually reflect this. Let me move this stuff just a little bit. I've kind of had these envelopes on hold for over a week. But anyway, here's the here's the packet of envelopes. And what I had done is I put uh, I put the Spurs here, and I put the top seven guys. I put six guys, and then I put uh, a sixth man and a seventh man, not just to reflect the sixth and seventh man, but possible players that have been traded. And when I have a player like Sacramento, they lost LaSalle Thompson in a trade with the Pacers for Tisdale. And so I put a LaSalle Thompson T, assuming I was getting a card of LaSalle Thompson during his first bunch of games with the Kings. And I'm pretty sure I will, based on what I've seen so far in these cards. But anyway, there's the Knicks. They pick up Kiki Vandeway. If you look at Portland, there will be a Vandeway as the seventh man, and he'll be a traded because he was traded from Portland during the season. So there wasn't too many major trades during 88-89. That Adrian Dantley for Mark Aguirre was the largest of all the trades. So, But anyway, it's just uh, a fun way to organize them. I, I usually don't put that many names on a card, but this uh, league has a lot of those traded players, and so I just wanted to make sure I, I can remember the sixth and seventh man on some of these envelopes. And I, of course, have stats for the team, how well Denver did. They scored 118, gave up 116, all that kind of fun little stats to refresh my memory because I'm not really, uh, I know the stats from almost all the 1970s and early 1980s, but my 19, late 1980s, early 90s stats are just a little bit limited because I didn't play as much tabletop basketball during those eras. So 
Anyway, this is how this uh, unboxing is turning out. I've got a gazillion more cards to go through, and I may show you how my collating is going in a little bit, so stay tuned. All right, here are the humble beginnings of my collating session. As you can see, I've outlaid the envelopes by division on this pool table and I'm just getting started. I've got some combo cards. I'm just going to throw them on this rack here because I don't really know where they're going to end up. I can't remember. Clinton Wheeler was a blazer, then a heat. I can't remember. <laughs> Same with Brad Lowhouse. He was probably one of those Sacramento Kings Celtics as well, but I'm just going to start grabbing stacks. I'm going to see Richard Morton on Indiana and throw him on the Indiana pile. Ron Cavanaugh, 7-1. New Jersey. It's like announcing the NBA draft here. Where are the Nets? Oh, yeah, the Atlantic Division. Oh, I put Atlantic down here. Kind of fooled my own system here. Here's Brad Lowhouse in Sacramento. And here's the overall Golden State Warriors uh, team card if you want to just play a game a general game with this playing card and i have not done that yet so i'm going to have to find out what that's all about with joe bryan's bank shot miami heat right here and miami was actually thrown in the midwest division in its first season and i don't have any recollection of that so they finished in last place of course as an expansion team and there's the portland trailblazers my hometown uh, fast break A, I like it. Defense plus one, not as so good. Pace plus five, I do like that. But the Blazers, during this season, they actually had um, um, Ron Schuler, uh, coach of the year, the prior year for the Blazers. And then this year, they went 25 and 22 and they fired Schuler. So it was kind of one of those things you're like, are you a good coach or are you not a good coach? Is the coach of the year award a kiss of death or not? We just don't know but rick adelman took over and of course the team that was all started by ron Schuler, a little bit by jack ramsey went to the finals in 89 90 so interesting sequence of events for portland who finished 39 and 43 and i actually went to the playoff game they qualified on the final day of the season but then they got swept by the los angeles lakers so doc rivers atlanta and as you can see, I've got this brick. I got this brick. And then I've got a whole brick over there on the back side. So we'll see what uh, how quickly this transforms. There's the uh, Ricky Green, who was a jazz player for the longest time, ended up with the expansion Charlotte Hornets. And Chris Dudley, who eventually became a Blazer. And I was never that crazy about his gameplay because he's so one-dimensional. But nonetheless... A productive rebounder and a decent shot blocker. Dallas Mavericks, Bill Wennington. So Wennington and Blob. Boy, those those are some those are some centers before Wennington became a Chicago Bull. Here's Detroit. Bad boy Rick Mahorn. Frank Johnson. Houston Rockets. Q Dog. Quentin Daly. Los Angeles Clippers. Clippers, of course, in seventh place. I just did not see that. Orlando Woolridge, 74 games with the Los Angeles Lakers. He had recovered from some of his uh, his drug problems, but, of course, ultimately he, he died young, around 50 years old, unfortunately. Rest in peace, Orlando Woolridge. Sid Moncrief, Milwaukee. He was getting a little bit older. The knees were giving out. But you got to love yourself. Some Sidney Moncrief, still a very good team leader and a great all-around player. Give you some all-star performance in a pinch. Johnny Newman, New York Knicks. Skinny as a rail. That guy could play the ball, some ball, though. First place Knicks. Were those the Patino Knicks? They may have been the Rick Patino Knicks. Anyway, a couple more cards and I will...
pick up the pace and show you a later version of this collation. Ty Corbin and Kiki Vandaway with Portland. See, I'd like to play, I liked playing Kiki. He couldn't play that much defense or anything. Let's see. Gives up baskets uh, zero to thirty-five <laughs> on defense, so he'll he'll give you some points, but he'll give away some points on the other end. And David Greenwood, that guy used to be a super super player. Spurs. Daryl Griffith, Utah Jazz. First place, Utah Jazz. Maybe Daryl Griffith's last full season in the NBA. Here's the combo card for Danny Ainge. So that's what he did with both Boston and Sacramento. Ed Neely, I did not realize. Kurt Rambis Midwest was actually on two teams this year. And of course, my favorite, Larry Bird, playing in six games for Boston. Of course I'm going to start that guy. Still averaged 19-3 in six games. Did not make a three-pointer this year, though. Uh, Daryl Dawkins playing for the Detroit Pistons. Did Daryl Dawkins accumulate a ring, or was he cut before he could get one? He only played 14 games. And Rob Rose, I could not tell you who that player is, but he probably played, yep, two games, but with Joe Bryan's bank shot basketball, you get everybody who played in a game, which is kind of cool and brand new to me. David Wingate, Philadelphia 76ers. They were in second place. Great player out of Georgetown. Scott Roth, San Antonio Spurs. Okay, they were no good. The Milwaukee Bucks team card. The Dallas Mavericks fast break card. And intermittently, you get just the dreaded blank card. Don't forget Ron Grandison. Boston Celtics, all of 72 games. Wow. I don't know much about the Celtics of 1989. I did not realize that Grandison played so much. Boston was in third place, 42 and 40. Kelly Trapuca, his last productive, super productive year as an expansion, Charlotte Hornet. Tree Rollins, Cleveland Cadavers. I mean Cavaliers. So they got Tree Rollins and Chris Dudley, a couple of non-scoring shot blockers. Tree being a little better at the shot blocking. Denver, David Greenwood. So we already had a Greenwood on the Spurs and on Denver, so we know where he was. Can't remember if he was traded from Denver to the Spurs or the Spurs to Denver. I would guess Spurs to Denver myself. Tell us, Frank. Mike Woodson right here. Houston Rockets. Charles Smith, Los Angeles Clippers, the lowly Clips. Uh, the Clippers had Danny Manning, but he got injured 25 or so games into the season, so their season was over very quickly. Roni Cycli. Gotta love Roni. Joe Barry Carroll had a disappointing season in New Jersey. And any season that's not 20 points and 9 rebounds a game for Joe Barry Carroll was always disappointing for anyone who thought Joe Barry Carroll was going to be the best center in the game by the number one pick in the draft. Gerald Wilkins, New York Knickerbockers. I never look for the Knicks in first place. They're in first place this season. Wow. Dan Marley. Phoenix Suns. I think he's a rookie with Phoenix here. Jim Peterson, your ordinary average player. Sacramento. I actually think I have him maybe as the starting center on Sacramento because they traded away La LaSalle Thompson for Wayman Tisdale, who's a forward. Avery Johnson, Seattle Supersonics. And now we'll end it on this one and pick it up in a little while. John Stockton, assists from 51 to 77. 
Is this the year he averaged 13.6? I am not certain, but that's a lot of assists. On defense, he's the all-time steals leader. Steal 5 to 12 from 34 to 56. That is quite a few steals for Johnny Stockton. So Utah Jazz first place. Anyway, we'll pick this up later on and uh, see how the teams start to fill out. All right, you can see that one chunk of the three-set block of Bankshot basketball cards has been completed. One card that I found quite interesting was a league average card. So I guess you could probably play a game against the average for the league. I don't really know the exact reasoning behind it, but it's kind of an interesting card in itself. I've also found some interesting cards for players that have played hardly any time in the league. Including Barry Sumter, who played one minute of one game in the league. So that's an interesting development. He obviously did not score. <laughs> so two point miss, zero to 99. So got everything here in the old bank shot, 88 89 NBA season. Combo card. Kiki Vandaway. Whoop. Let's throw him over here. Kiki Vandaway combo card. David Wood. Chicago Bulls. For two whole games. Greg Dryling, Indiana. Tito Horford, Milwaukee. Ben Guillory, seven footer, 24 games. Sacramento, Denver Nuggets team card. New Jersey Nets team card. Philadelphia, 76ers. Uh, fast break offense of B. And that. So there you have the complete collation with the exception of the combo team cards. I may throw those guys onto the second team that they played for. You generally aren't going to have them play for the first team. So maybe I'll just throw, like Kiki Vandaway, I'll just throw him on the Knicks because... He finished the year with the Knicks. And I don't know where some of these guys ended up, so I'll have to look it up on the internet. So there you go. Full collation, 88-89 NBA for Bankshot Basketball. Okay, we're on the home stretch here with Bankshot Basketball, 88-89 season cards. I am in the process of collating and organizing the sets, as you can tell. I've got three quarters of the teams all in their packets. The biggest packet, the San Antonio Spurs. There was 29 cards in my little packet, so it's wanting to burst at the seams. The Spurs were a pretty lousy team at uh, 21 and 61. Not as bad as the Miami Heat, but the Heat have fewer extra cards that were traded cards. Uh, if I have a combined team card, I put the card with the team that... Uh, they last played for. So if it's, uh, say, Danny Ainge, he was traded from the Celtics to the Kings. His last team he played for was the Kings. So I put a, the combined card with the Kings. So anyway, I was just going to show you a little bit of how I've been organizing each of my teams. I'm using my packets and the top seven guys I've been using. Uh, I've been using that to organize most of the players. So for instance, we're on the Chicago Bulls here. And I'll go through the Bulls real quickly and organize them. The top seven guys right here will be on the top of the pack just to make sure everything's working really well. Presley and Hodges, Wood, Haley, all the scrubs I put to the side. I put the team fast break card on the top. Vincent was there. Horace Grant. Scotty Pippen. Corazine's on the bench. Purdue's on the bench. This is the team card. I put the, the team card. I'm never going to play that, so throw that on the bottom. Cartwright. Paxson's the seventh man. Hodges is the sixth man. And Michael Jordan. So I've got all those done, so I just go and I put this guy on top. 
Cartwright Grant Pippin. Vincent Jordan. So there's your starting five, and then the sixth and seventh men are Hodges and Paxson. Just put those guys away in the new envelope that I created on my inkjet printer. And I throw that there, and there they go. Next, we have the Milwaukee Bucks. So I go through these guys real carefully and go brown, uh, brown, Mark Davis, Ricky Green, Tito Horford. Uh, Kristoviak was in the starting lineup. Gray or no, Sigma, Humphreys. Team card. For fast breaks, Mark Davis, Paul Pressey, Terry Cummings, Ricky Pierce, who was amazing off the bench, Tony Brown, Andre Turner, Randy Brewer, team card goes on the bottom, and Sid Moncrief. Finish it up with Sigma, Cummings, fast break card on top, Christoviak, Pressey, and Moncrief. Humphreys and Pierce. And the Milwaukee Bucks of 89 are done. Next are the Atlanta Hawks. Go through these guys quickly. Mannion, team card. Levingston, Neek. Conkak, Mannion, Malone, Spud, Pharrell, Tolbert, Team Card, Antoine Carr, Theus, Dudley Bradley, John Battle, and Doc. Okay, so the center is Moses, Cliff Levingston, Neek. Rivers, Reggie Theus, uh, Battle, and Antoine Carr. So throw that team on top, and the next thing you know, they're done. So it also is just kind of a verifier that those guys were there. I didn't miscollate anybody. They were, all seem to be there. Down to the final two, Cleveland Cavaliers. Nance, Keys, Cleveland, Doherty, Hot Rod, uh, Hubbard, Valentine, Harper, Price. Oh, I do have Sanders as the sixth man. Cavaliers team card, Elo, seventh man, Rollins, and Dudley. So we got Brad Doherty, number one, Nance, number two, Williams, number three. Uh, price number four with Harper. And then sixth is Sanders, seventh is Elo. Everything's looking great for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Bunch them up. Have to play a game of this. And finally, the world champion, Detroit Pistons, John Long, Aguirre. That's the team, team Aguirre, though. I just want the individual Aguirre with the Pistons. Lambeer, Rowinski, Michael Williams. Uh, VJ, I do not have him in the top seven because of Dantley. Isaiah, the Buddha, Pistons, Steve Harris. Spider Sally, Joe Dumar. Shows how deep this team is. There's D. Rodman. There's Dantley with Detroit as the traded. I got Mark Aguirre and Detroit. Daryl Dawkins. Love to put him in a game. And finally, Rick Mahorn. So, center is Bill Lane Beer. Um, Mahorn Aguirre. 
Thomas Dumars Rodman. And the traded Adrian Dantley to fill the Pistons. So they're all there. Well, it looks like Joe Bryan got me all the cards that were in the complete season because I've had no issues with all 25 of these teams from 1988-89. That's a pretty darn big amount of Pistons for a championship squad, but they do fit. They get a little tight, like with the San Antonio Spurs. Even the Mavericks are a little high. Even the Clippers are just a little bit thick, but that's because of all the traded cards, all the two-team player combo cards. Um, this is just a new experience for me with bank shot basketball, the traded cards, and, and the like. So anyway, that is the completion of the collation of the cards. I'm going to end up throwing those. into my orange bin I got from Dollar Tree for $1.25. And after that happens, I will be all organized and ready to play some games. So look for a bank shot basketball game probably in the next week or so. I'm probably going to break out a game between a couple teams in 88-89. If you have any teams you'd like to suggest that I play from 88-89, feel free to throw those in the comments. Anyway, this is Rod Hess signing off from Rod's Tabletop Hoops. Have a good evening.